Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, is a legendary creature that has captured the imagination of people for decades. The mystery surrounding Bigfoot centers on the question of whether the creature is real or not. Despite numerous reported sightings, photographic evidence, and even alleged footprints, the existence of Bigfoot remains one of the greatest mysteries of America. The story of Bigfoot dates back to the early 20th century when reports of large, human-like creatures living in the wilderness began to emerge from North America. Over time, these reports grew in frequency and detail, leading to the creation of the modern Bigfoot legend. Despite the fact that many scientists and experts have dismissed the existence of Bigfoot as a hoax or a misidentification of other creatures, there are still many who believe that the creature is real and that it continues to roam the wilderness to this day. One of the most famous pieces of evidence in the Bigfoot mystery is the Patterson footage. This is a short, blurry film that was taken in 1967 by Bigfoot researcher Roger Patterson. The footage shows a large, bipedal creature walking through the forest and has been a source of controversy and speculation ever since it was first released. Critics of the footage argue that it is a hoax, citing the poor quality of the film and the fact that the creature in the footage is difficult to identify with certainty. They also point out that Patterson had a history of involvement in Bigfoot hoaxes and that the film was shot in an area known for Bigfoot sightings, making it easy for him to fake the footage. However, proponents of the footage argue that the poor quality of the film is due to the primitive technology available at the time and that the creature in the footage is clearly a Bigfoot. They also argue that there is no sufficient evidence to suggest that the film was a hoax and that it remains one of the best pieces of evidence for the existence of Bigfoot. The Patterson footage is not the only piece of evidence that has been put forward in support of Bigfoot. There have been many other alleged sightings and pieces of photographic and video evidence over the years, although most of these have been dismissed as hoaxes or misidentifications. Despite the lack of believable evidence, the search for Bigfoot continues and many people remain convinced that the creature is real and that evidence will eventually be found to prove its existence. However, proponents of Bigfoot argue that the lack of evidence does not necessarily mean that the creature does not exist. They also argue that the remote wilderness areas where Bigfoot is said to reside are difficult to study, making it difficult to find solid proof. Despite the ongoing debate, the search for Bigfoot continues, with many amateur sleuths and professional researchers dedicated to uncovering the truth. Some have even claimed to have had close encounters with the creature, describing it as a large, hairy, bipedal creature that stands over six feet tall. While these claims remain unverified, they have only added to the mystery and speculation surrounding Bigfoot. The mystery of Bigfoot continues to be one of the most fascinating and contentious debates in modern times. Despite the lack of irrefutable proof, many people still believe that the creature is real and continue to search for answers. Whether Bigfoot is real or not, it remains one of the greatest mysteries of our time and will continue to captivate the public imagination for generations to come. The cold shot is one of the most legendary moments in the history of Major League Baseball and is shrouded in mystery to this day. On October 1, 1932, Babe Ruth stepped up to the plate in the fifth inning of Game 3 of the World Series, and what happened next has been the subject of debate for nearly a century. According to some, Ruth pointed to center field and then proceeded to hit a home run to that exact spot, calling his shot in the process. This legendary moment has become one of the defining moments of Babe Ruth's legendary career and is often cited as proof of his greatness as a player. One of the key pieces of evidence that supports the idea that Babe Ruth actually called his shot comes from a reporter who was covering the game that day. In an article that he wrote for the New York Evening Telegram, the reporter claimed to have seen Ruth point to center field before hitting the home run. This account helped to establish the story of the called shot in the public imagination and has been cited by many as proof that Babe Ruth was indeed capable of calling his shots on the field. However, it's important to note that this reporter was not the only one at the game that day and there were many other journalists who did not see Ruth make any kind of gesture. This has led some to question the accuracy of the reporter's account and to suggest that it may have been embellished over the years as the story of the called shot has grown in popularity. 
Some say that Ruth simply gestured in the direction of the pitcher, not center field, and that the home run was simply a lucky coincidence. Still others believe that Ruth never actually made any kind of gesture at all, and that the called shot is simply a myth that has been perpetuated over the years. So, what really happened on that October day in 1932? Was Babe Ruth really capable of calling his shot, or was it just a lucky break? The answer remains a mystery to this day, with no clear-cut evidence to support either side of the argument. One thing that is certain, however, is that the called shot has become a larger-than-life legend that continues to captivate baseball fans to this day. Whether it was a calculated move by a baseball master or simply a stroke of luck, the called shot remains one of the greatest mysteries in the history of America's national pastime. The called shot by Babe Ruth is a mystery that continues to fascinate and intrigue baseball fans nearly a century after it happened. While some believe it to be a testament to Ruth's greatness, others see it as simply a lucky break. Regardless of the truth behind the story, the called shot remains one of the most legendary moments in the history of Major League Baseball, and a mystery that continues to captivate the imagination of American baseball fans. The shot heard round the world is a phrase that has come to symbolize the start of the American Revolutionary War, and yet, the true nature of the shot remains shrouded in mystery. This historic event took place on April 19, 1775, at Lexington Green in Massachusetts, where British soldiers clashed with American colonists in a skirmish that marked the beginning of the American Revolution. The mystery surrounding the shot heard round the world revolves around the question of who actually fired the shot that started the war. Some historical accounts suggest that the shot was fired by one of the British soldiers, while others claim that it was fired by a member of the American militia. The identity of the person who fired the shot remains unknown, and the truth about what happened that day has been lost to the sands of time. The controversy surrounding the shot heard round the world has been fueled by a lack of concrete evidence. There are no surviving eyewitness accounts of who fired the shot, and the accounts that do exist are often contradictory and unreliable. The debate over the identity of the person who fired the shot has raged on for centuries, with no clear answer in sight. In the years since the start of the American Revolution, many have tried to uncover the truth about what happened that day at Lexington Green. Some have scoured archives for any evidence that might shed light on the identity of the person who fired the shot, while others have pieced together the events of the day based on historical accounts and the accounts of other witnesses. However, despite the many years that have passed, the mystery surrounding the shot heard round the world remains one of the most intriguing and debated moments in American history. Many individuals have been speculated to have been the person who fired the shot, each with their own unique story and circumstances. Some of the most well-known individuals include Captain John Parker, a veteran of the French and Indian War and the commander of the Lexington Militia, and Jesse Adair, a young private in the Lexington Militia who was known for his marksmanship. Another individual who has been speculated to have fired the shot is Matthew Kilroy, a private in the Lexington Militia who was known for his bravery and marksmanship. Kilroy was reportedly seen holding his musket at the ready, and some have suggested that he fired the shot that started the war. Finally, there is also the possibility that the shot was fired by a British soldier. Some accounts suggest that the shot was fired by a British officer who was trying to bring the skirmish to a quick end, while others claim that it was fired by a nervous private who had accidentally discharged his weapon. Whether it was fired by a British soldier or an American colonist, the shot heard round the world remains a symbol of the bravery and determination of the American people in the face of oppression and tyranny. Despite the many years that have passed, the mystery surrounding the shot continues to captivate audiences and inspire new generations of patriots and freedom fighters. The death of Billy the Kid, also known as William H. Bonney, remains one of the greatest mysteries of the Old West. While it is widely believed that he was killed by Sheriff Pat Garrett on July 14, 1881, there has been a long-standing speculation that he did not actually die, but instead escaped and lived under an assumed identity. One of the most intriguing theories about Billy the Kid's survival revolves around a man named Brushy Bill Roberts. Brushy Bill claimed to be the real Billy the Kid and that he had faked his own death to escape prosecution for his crimes. 
According to Brushy Bill's account, he was able to escape from the courthouse where he was being held and fled to Texas, where he lived under an assumed identity for many years. In the years that followed, Brushy Bill became something of a folk hero, with many people coming forward to support his claims and others expressing their skepticism. There are a few details in Brushy Bill's story that are consistent with what is known about the real Billy the Kid. Brushy Bill claimed to have been born in New York City and to have traveled to New Mexico with his parents when he was a child. This matches the known background of the real Billy the Kid. Brushy Bill also claimed to have gone by the name William H. Bonney, which was one of the aliases used by the real Billy the Kid. Additionally, Brushy Bill was able to identify some of the people who knew the real Billy the Kid, including some of the Regulators, a group of gunmen who fought in the Lincoln County War. There are, however, several inconsistencies in his story that have led many experts to dismiss his claims as nothing more than a fabrication. One of the most significant inconsistencies in Brushy Bill's story is the fact that he did not come forward until many years after the death of the real Billy the Kid. According to his account, he was motivated to come forward after learning that a book was being written about Billy the Kid and he wanted to set the record straight about his own life. Another inconsistency in Brushy Bill's story is the fact that he could not produce any concrete evidence to support his claim. While he did bear a resemblance to the real Billy the Kid and had a scar on his chin that was similar to one that Billy the Kid was known to have, he could not provide any other evidence to back up his story. Additionally, there were several factual errors in Brushy Bill's account of his life that called his credibility into question. For example, he claimed that he had fought in the Battle of Ojo Caliant, which took place several years before before Billy the Kid was even born. He also claimed to have known many of the key figures in the Lincoln County War, despite the fact that he was a young boy at the time. Despite these inconsistencies, some people remain convinced that Brushy Bill Roberts was, in fact, the real Billy the Kid. They point to the fact that many people who knew Billy the Kid personally believed that he had survived his supposed death, and that Brushy Bill's story contains many details that are consistent with what is known about the real Billy the Kid. Whether or not Brush Bill's story was designed to take advantage of the public's fascination with the legendary outlaw, or was in fact the truth remains a mystery to this day. Despite the many questions and uncertainties surrounding the death of Billy the Kid, his legend continues to capture the imaginations of people all over the world. Whether he died at the hands of Sheriff Pat Garrett or escaped to live out the rest of his days under an assumed identity, the mystery surrounding the life and death of this legendary outlaw will continue to be a source of speculation and intrigue for generations to come. The Black Dahlia case is one of the most infamous unsolved true crime mysteries in American history. The case involves the brutal killing of Elizabeth Short, a 22-year-old aspiring actress who was found in a vacant lot in Los Angeles in 1947. The case remains unsolved to this day, and there are many mysterious aspects to it that have baffled investigators and the public alike. One of the most mysterious aspects of the Black Dahlia case is the sheer brutality of it. Short's body was found in multiple sections, with her internal organs removed and her face slashed from the corners of her mouth to her ears, creating a gruesome Glasgow smile. The attacker also drained all the blood from Short's body, leaving her pale and ghostly. The motive behind the event remains a mystery, as there was no apparent assault or robbery. Another mysterious aspect of the case is the possible connections to Hollywood and the entertainment industry. Short was an aspiring actress, and the devastating event captured the attention of the media and the public in a way that few other crimes have. Some have speculated that Short may have been involved with the wrong people in Hollywood, or that her death was somehow related to her aspirations to become a star. However, there is no hard evidence to support these theories. The investigation into the Black Dahlia case was also shrouded in mystery. The Los Angeles Police Department received a large number of false leads and confessions, and the case quickly became a media sensation. The pressure to solve the case was intense, and the police may have been tempted to overlook or ignore evidence that didn't fit their theories. Some have even suggested that the police themselves may have been involved in the murder or cover-up. Despite decades of investigation and speculation, the Black Dahlia case remains unsolved. There have been numerous suspects over the years, including several who confessed to the crime, but no one has ever been charged or convicted. 
The mystery surrounding the Black Dahlia case has inspired countless books, films, and TV shows, and has become an enduring part of American folklore. But the true story of what happened to Elizabeth Short on that dark night in 1947 remains one of the greatest American mysteries of the 20th century. Thank you for joining us for this episode of 50 Unexplained Mysteries of America. From the elusive Bigfoot to the unsolved Black Dahlia case, each entry delve into the fascinating and often enigmatic stories that have captivated our collective imagination. We hope you enjoyed this journey into the unexplained and invite you to join us next week for another episode.